Do you want to write a really good literature review chapter or a really good systematic review paper, but you're struggling how to structure all this information, you know, all these papers that you've read, how to structure them and tell a coherent story and develop a critical argument in your literature review? Well, then in this video, I'm going to go over the four main ways in which you can structure the literature review is really going to allow you to speed up the whole process and be much more critical, avoid being descriptive and above all else, tell a coherent story in your literature review, being in a chapter of your thesis or in a review paper. Now, if you're new here, my name is Marek Kiczkowek and I run Academic English Now, where we help PhD students and researchers regularly publish papers in top journals in the field. So now, what are these four ways in which you can structure the literature review. I'm going to go over each one of them and explain how it works and then I'm also going to show you templates and examples of how this works in practice. Before I go over each of them it's important to highlight that it doesn't mean that your whole literature review has to be structured in this particular way. What's going to happen is that for example one section of your literature review might be structured from general to specific whereas another section might be structured more chronologically right um, or even a paragraph one paragraph within a particular section might be structured chronologically whereas another paragraph might be structured more uh, general to specific don't think that you have to take one of these four ways and structure your whole literature review like that it doesn't work like that you can mix them a little bit. Now with that said, what are the four ways in which you can typically structure the, the literature review? The most common one is general to specific, right? So you can think of it that you know you start with the with the broadest, with the most general things, and then you go to the more and more and more specific arguments. So to give you an example, if you know if your topic is about whether online courses can help PhD students uh, publish papers in top journals, right, uh, which is the sort of courses that we run, then, you know, you'd start more general. So you would talk about writing research papers in general, the problems with writing research papers, online courses more general, and then what are the benefits of online courses, right? So you go from general, you go to more and more specific, right? And I'm going to show you an example of that in a second as well. Now, the second way of organizing the literature review is also chronologically. So this makes a lot of sense if you're trying to show a development of an idea, for example, or a development of a concept in your field. And you would start with the oldest and you would go chronologically to the newest. This isn't that common, but again, if you're trying to show, you know, maybe you're doing a systematic review and one of your research questions is to sort of track the development, of a particular concept in your field to see how it has changed and how it's reached the current stage, then it would make sense to structure that particular section chronologically from oldest to newest. Or you might want to structure one paragraph like that because you want to show how, you know, how a particular definition has developed, right? And that could just be one paragraph structured chronologically. Now, the, the third way to structure things is um, by topic. What do I mean by that? So to come back to my initial example about, you know, writing papers, PhD students. So if we structure it by topic, well, you, you could look at, you know, for example, the, the challenges that PhD students are having with research papers, the challenges that researchers are having, the challenges that master students are having, right? So we have these different topics and that's how we are organizing our literature review or our paragraphs, right? By the main topics and the main subtopics. Now, the, the fourth way of organizing uh, your literature review is by discipline or sub-discipline. So what I mean by that, if like, let's say you have sort of a multidisciplinary research or if a particular, you know, let's say research concept has been used differently in different disciplines, then it might make sense to organize a, a whole section and particular paragraphs by discipline. In other words, you might be showing how, you know, how a particular concept or a definition has been used in psychology, in biology, in social sciences, right? To arrive at the final definition that you're going to be using in your field, right? So that's why you'd have discipline or sub-discipline or maybe particular authors, right? How different authors have been using a particular concept. So that's the fourth way of organizing the literature review. Now, with that said, let's look at some practical examples and some templates that will help you to organize your own literature review. 
So before we dive into it, let me just preface it by saying that these materials come from my um, program Research Paper Mastery that helps you to write three or more papers for high impact journals every single year. And if you're interested in having access to these materials and working with me closely on that mastermind, then definitely schedule a free one-to-one -one consultation with my team where we're going to see what challenges you have, what goals, and whether re Research Paper Mastery might be a good fit in your situation. But I wanted to share this small part of the program and um, that normally is only available for my paying clients. I wanted to share it with you as well to provide you as much value here on, on YouTube as well and help as many people out with their literature review. So in terms of you know the structure of the literature review, we went over the four main types of structure. So let's now see some examples. So one way to structure it, as I said, is chronologically, meaning you know from the oldest to the newest. And this is really useful if you wanna trace the development of a particular concept or a theory, as I said, right? So you can see in here, you know, that we are looking at the term native speaker and we show how this term developed over the years, right? In, in the field. And there might be other paragraphs following this where you know we further show the development up until the present time because clearly in here it's not finished yet. So that's one really useful way if you want to show the development of a particular concept or theory. Now number two, you know you can also structure it by author, domain or theory as I mentioned, right? And um, so in here, we've got different authors who are doing different things. For example, we've got non-mechanical models, right? Who are done by Brands and Tanner, right? Then we've got other approaches, right? Parallel approaches have investigated the, law, the role of layer dependent who were reviewed by this person. And then we've got another type of studies and an example of an author, discrete element models. So as you can see, you know, you can also structure a paragraph and you could do it also in a whole section of the literature review where you structure it by specific authors, a specific subdomain or a specific theory. If you have different theories and maybe each paragraph presents one theory in more detail, right? Or in one paragraph, you present various theories. Now, another probably the most common way of organizing things is from general to specific. So it is what I call the inverted pyramid model. And this is super, super useful overall to structure your academic writing. As you can see, you know, we kind of start with the broad topic, uh, teamwork and the importance of teamwork, right? And then we dive more specifically to, to a specific framework uh, for teamwork, right? And then a specific aspect of teamwork, a role, the collaborator, right? And then, you know, we dive into specific studies on that framework. So it clearly starts general and then it goes more and more specific. And that's a really simple, but very, very useful and common way to organize paragraphs and whole sections in your literature review. And finally, we can also, you know, organize stuff by topic, right? So, you know, for example, in here, we talk about, you know, native and non-native speakers, kind of all the time, right? But in different topics, right? So first we talk about students, teachers, and recruiters' perceptions. Then we talk about, you know, like who basically is a better teacher, right? So that's a, yet a different topic, right? Then we talk about, you know, recruiters' attitudes and hiring policies, uh, students' preferences. All these, you know, they, they are about the same topics, so native and non-native speaker teachers, but in different, like, subtopics, if you see what I mean. So that's how you can organize, like, the entire section of your literature review by topic. Now, if you want more personalized help writing a review paper or writing the literature, literature review chapter for your thesis, then schedule a free one-to-one -one consultation with my team. We're going to look at the main challenges, the main goals that you have, and see how best we can help you to really achieve those goals faster and with greater ease. And the link to that free one-to-one -one consultation is right below this video.